So we're going to look at an example of a problem involving work and energy. And this problem is about someone who's pushing a barrel up a ramp. And the goal of the problem is to find how much force must she exert on the barrel as she goes up the ramp. So like any problem with work and energy, we're going to set it up with some problem solving steps. So we're going to, we're going to draw a diagram, which I've just taped on here. We're going to define the initial place to be at the bottom of the ramp. And I'll just add that on here. So we're going to call our initial height zero. We're going to call the final place at the top of the ramp. And that's up here. And the problem tells us that uh, the top of the ramp is one meter higher than the bottom of the ramp. And it doesn't say this. Sometimes in problems on work and energy, you have to read between the lines a little bit. We're supposed to assume that this person is pushing the barrel at a constant speed, even though it doesn't say that. So let's assume the barrel's speed is constant. All right, then we're going to find the force. So uh, when we do work in energy, we always have to think hard about uh, what should be the system. And we're going to work this problem two different ways. In one, the first way, we're just going to make the system the barrel, which clearly has to be in the system since that's who's moving up the ramp. And then we need to think about the external forces on that system. And for that, for the system of the barrel, we're going to make a force diagram. We have a normal force from the ramp. We also have a force, you can see it on the picture, she's pushing parallel to the ramp. So I'm going to put a force parallel to the ramp, I'm going to call that N of girl, and then we have MG. So that would be our force diagram. Um, the other thing before we start setting this up with equations, we need to make sure we understand the forms of energy possessed by our system that we've defined. And if the system is a barrel, and the barrel is moving, then it has kinetic energy. Um, but that is it. A barrel by itself, inside itself, does not possess any gravitational energy. We'll work the problem a different way and talk about gravitational energy in a few minutes. But a barrel, all by itself, only possesses kinetic energy. All right. So then, to solve a problem, we're always going to start with the work energy principle, which says that the net work by all the external forces on any system has to be equal to the change in energy. And now, in this problem, to find the net work, we have three forces. So we have to find the work by N ramp. We have to add, to find the total, the work by N of the girl and work by MG. And that'll be the left side. On the right side, the change in energy means final kinetic energy, one half MV squared, minus initial kinetic energy. And that's actually going to be zero if we assume that the speed is constant. So that kind of makes the problem simpler. VF equals VI. So those two terms will just cancel out. Okay, to find the left-hand side, uh, we're going to need to find the force of the girl, and that comes into the work equation for the girl. But we also have to, to know the work by the other two forces. So we have to think about each one separately. Work by N of ramp. When we calculate work, we're always going to do that by the force, which in this case is N ramp absolute value, times how far the objects moved, absolute value, times the cosine of the angle between the force and the
the motion of the object. Now, this force and ramp is in that direction. We're going to write that underneath to show the direction of that force. The object moves up the ramp, parallel to the ramp, which is in that direction. We're going to draw an arrow underneath to represent that. Theta is always the angle between those two directions. So in this case, you can see it's a 90 degree angle. And um, the cosine of 90 degrees is always zero. So even though we don't know how much force the ramp makes, it doesn't matter because we're going to multiply that by zero. So the work of the ramp is zero. All right, then we can find, um, we'll do the work by mg next. So the formula for that would be the force, mg, absolute value, times d, times the cosine of a, a different theta. It's going to be different because that force is in a different direction. So the force is now down. The d is still up the ramp. Theta has to be the angle between those two directions. So we actually need to know what's this little angle here. I'll call that alpha. The angle of the ramp, which the problem doesn't tell us. But once we find that, we can find the angle theta here by alpha plus another 90 degrees. That would give us our theta. Okay, so we're going to come back to that. We're going to find alpha next. So on the picture, it showed us uh, the ramp looks like this, and we have a delta y of 1 meter and a delta x for the ramp of 2 meters. No, we don't know delta x. It tells us the length of the ramp this way, and we'll call that delta z of 2 meters. That's how long the ramp is. Here's the angle alpha that we're trying to find. So we're going to use our trig function tangent alpha is equal to delta y, the opposite side. Nope, wrong trig function. We're going to use sine of alpha, which is opposite delta y over hypotenuse, which is delta z. And I'll just go ahead and put in numbers here. So that is one meter over two meters, so it's half. So alpha is the arc sine of a half, and that's a 30 degree angle. Now we can go back and find the work by mg. It's mg absolute value, d absolute value. Cosine of theta. Theta is actually 120 degrees. And we're going to need to put in some numbers for this one. Uh, the mass of the barrel is 50 gram, uh, kilograms. G, 9.8 newtons per kilogram. D is how far the object moves up the ramp, which is 2 meters. And then we need cosine of 120 degrees. Well, if you multiply that out, the cosine of 120, it turns out, is negative one half. Then um, negative one half times two meters, so that's negative one. So what's left is 9.8 times 50. So I'm going to get negative 490 uh, newtons times meters. So gravitational force does negative work in this problem. And that should make sense because the force is at least partly in a direction that's opposite to the direction that the object moves. Now before we go on to um, find the work by the girl, one more thing you can notice here. Um, it is always true for gravitational force that there's another way we can always calculate the work. And you can easily prove this. The work by mg is also equal to the formula mg times y initial minus y final. 
where y is the height of the object. So let's just sub in the numbers here and make sure that that one works. Um, so m is 50 kilograms, g 9.8 newtons per kilogram, y initial is 0, y final is 1 meter. So from this formula as well, we can find the work by mg to be negative 490 newtons, uh, joules, excuse me. Okay, so now we've found the work by the ramp, we found the work by mg. To finish the problem, we're going to go back and uh, sub that into our work energy formula. So we had the total work which was the work from N ramp plus the work by N girl plus the work by MG equal to the change in energy which was zero. Well we already know that the ramp's work is zero. We figured out the work of MG. The work of N girl, how would we find that? Well, it's the force in girl, absolute value, times how far the object moves, times the cosine theta. Now, we don't know the force. That's actually the goal of the problem. But we do know the direction. It is parallel to the ramp. And D is parallel to the ramp. So for that force, the theta would be 0. And cosine of z 0 degrees is just 1. So going back to our final uh, work energy equation, we can say that the work of the girl is N girl times D, absolute value, times 1. And that must equal the negative of the work by mg, because we proved that the total work is 0. So to finish the problem, n of the girl, which is what we wanted to find, is negative the work of mg over the distance the object moves. And I already subbed in my numbers, but just so you can see how it works, I'll put the formula again for the work by mg. That was um, negative, negative mg, I'm going to use the y initial minus y final version over how far the object moves. And so we found that the work by mg was negative 490 joules. So I have negative of that. So that gives me plus 490 joules over d, which is 2 meters. And so the final solution for the force of the girl is uh, 245 newtons. Newton is joule per meter. So that's one way to solve the problem. Now, <clears throat> another way we could look at it is um, with a different system. So let's do it again. This time, it's the same problem but the system will be barrel plus earth. And when we think about the external forces acting on that system, mg is not going to be an external force because it's an internal force of earth on barrel. So the only external forces now are N of the ramp and N of the girl. And I'm not going to try to draw a force diagram for systems where Earth is in the system. It's just too strange to do that. So we're just going to make a list. All right. The other difference, if this is our system, is that now we'll have more than one form of energy inside our system. So. The barrel will have kinetic energy because it's in motion. 
but because of the interaction between the barrel and the earth, the gravitational interaction, you can think of that as storing up another kind of energy as the barrel gets lifted. And we call that energy gravitational energy. The book will call that U sub G. So there are two kinds of energy. Now, if we wanted to find the girl's force, looking at the problem this way, we would still go back to the total work, external, being equal to change in energy of the system. However, this time, on the left-hand side, we would just have two, two works, the work of the ramp and the work of the girl. And on the right side, we're going to have two kinds of energy that can change. So I need the final energy minus initial. That's what delta E means. So I need the final kinetic energy and the final gravitational energy. And as you know, the formula for gravitational energy is always mg times y. It kind of looks similar to the formula for the work done by a gravitational force, except uh, where one is positive, the other will be negative. So for our final gravitational energy, we're going to put mgy final. So that's our total final energy. Let's call that EF. Now we have to subtract the total initial energy, kinetic, and gravitational. There's our EI. And this time that's not going to be zero. The f since the speed doesn't change, we can cancel out the change in kinetic energy. But there is a change in gravitational energy of this system. Okay, so simplifying this a little bit, We've already proved that the ramp's work is zero. That hasn't changed. The work of the girl is the force of the girl, absolute value, times how far the barrel moves, times cosine theta. So that's the only thing on the left side. And we would say that the work of the girl is equal to the change in gravitational energy, mgy final minus mgy initial. And if we want to, we can make y initial zero. We can set, we can always choose our zero height at any place we want. So it's convenient to choose it at the lowest place in the problem. Okay, so then n of girl comes out to be m g y final divided by d cosine theta, and remember this theta is the angle between the girl's force and the displacement. So that was our zero degree angle. So cosine of that is just one. So by this method we get uh, the same answer as before. M is 50 kilograms, 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Y final is one meter. The D, which is the distance the barrel moves, uh, 245 minutes would be the M of the girl. So we just solved the same problem by two different methods. Um, you can always choose whatever system you want. Um, whatever s system seems to make the problem easier to solve for you. And the other thing that that's good to remember from, from this problem is when you're calculating the work by mg, you can always just use that simple formula that we proved, um, which is right here. Work by mg can always be found from the force mg times initial height minus final height. All right. And the final lesson is, if your system doesn't include the Earth, then your system doesn't have any gravitational energy. Instead, gravity is an external force that's doing work on your system. 
if your system does include the Earth, then your system does possess gravitational energy, and but there is no external force of gravity, so gravity isn't doing any work. You can look at the problem either way, and you'll always get the same answer by either method.